Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and we have already completed Azure DevOps Zero to Hero series with 16 total videos with end-to-end -end concepts, demos, animations, graphics and everything that is there to know from a beginner's perspective. And we went from beginner to intermediate to advanced level as well. And this particular video, it's kind of a bonus lecture in the same series because many of you have requested me to create a dedicated video for interview questions from again beginner's point of view and to the advanced level. So that is why I am publishing this video. So without wasting any time further, let me take you over to the GitHub repository where I have added all the interview questions. So we have 15 interview questions as of now and I'll keep updating that GitHub repository and pull requests are also welcome. And let's head over to that and let's have a look. Before starting with this video or with these interview questions, make sure you have done the hands-on for Azure DevOps. If you have followed this particular series or if you have followed any other resource or if you have even followed Microsoft Learn website, doesn't matter. Just make sure that you have done all the hands-on. You are aware of all the concepts in Azure DevOps that we have covered in these 16 videos. And if you have done that, then we are good to start with this video. Else I would highly recommend going back and have a look at all the videos and do the actual hands-on and then come back to this video later on. This should be referred as the last video once you are done everything with Azure DevOps, right? So uh, I'm in my GitHub repository and you should already have the link by now. If not, you know where to find it. It will be there in the description section as well. And as we have seen for every video, there is a dedicated folder for it. And in that folder, I have provided all the screenshots, all the diagrams, all the notes, um, all the code snippets and everything that you need. So for this particular video, I have created a separate folder which says interview questions. You go inside that and there'll be a readme file. Okay. We'll start with the first one. The first question is explain a typical structure of an Azure DevOps YAML pipeline, right? So if the interviewer ask you that question, that means they are asking you or they are expecting you to explain the overall structure of that YAML pipeline. So it will start with trigger. This trigger could be anything. It could be a scheduled trigger or it could be a manual trigger or it could be, you know, something that's been triggered by another pipeline or it could be a scheduled trigger like run this pipeline at a certain time at a certain day, right? So trigger defines how this pipeline will be executed. If there is nothing, that means it is a manual trigger, right? So that is trigger. And then we have a section called pipeline. And this pipeline is divided into many different steps. So the first is stages. So there are different stages, different stages for build, deploy, test, and so on. And then each stage is divided into multiple jobs. Jobs is something that would run on an agent, right? So each stage can have one or more jobs, right? And these jobs, it can run on agent or it can be agentless. Like certain tasks does not require agent. For example, you are running just an arbitrary script, like let's say copy command, copy this file to this, to this directory, right? So it does not need an agent. So you can run that on agentless uh, fashion as well, right? And uh, these jobs can be dependent on each other. Yes, like execute this job once the previous job is completed and so on. And actually what happens is agent run a job and in that job you have multiple steps. These steps could be a script or a task, right? Script such as, you know, a shell script, a bash script or a PowerShell. That could be a script a task such as publish build artifact or Azure app deploy or invoke REST API. So these are the tasks. So if we go from bottom to up, the smallest unit is a step. Okay. Step could be a task or it could be a script or collection of multiple steps is a job. Job runs on an agent. You can have multiple jobs in a stage and a pipeline can have multiple stages. So this is how they are tied together. This is the hierarchy of an Azure DevOps YAML pipeline, right? So have a look at that. And if you have implemented it, you have already seen it, you have already created it, then there shouldn't be any issues, right? The next is which deployment strategy are you familiar with? Explain the CI CD flow, right? 
So blue green and rolling update are the most common deployment strategies. And in this example, we'll be looking into blue green. So what exactly is blue green? Let's have a look. All right. So how it works is let's say we have an app running version 1.0. Let's call this a blue app. So this is the blue version of the app. What we'll do, we'll create another app with the same application code with the same version and we'll call it a green version of the app. But this will also be running version 1.0. Now we'll do everything on the green app, the newer app that we just provisioned. So we'll do the build, we'll do the testing, and then we'll do the code deployment. Everything will be on the green app. So now the green app has the updated version, updated production code, which is not yet live for the viewers. So before making it live, we'll do a swap. Now, once we have done the swap, now our green app will become 1.0 and our blue app will become 2.0. So we did not touch our live production environment before the code was deployed to the environment. So this is what we did and there is no downtime. There is no user impact. Once everything is done, only then we made the switch. Now the users will be redirected from the version 1.0 to the version 2.0 and we can then destroy this green app version 1.0, right? So that is how our blue app 1.0 become blue app 2.0 with minimal impact, with minimum downtime, or in fact, no downtime. Uh, it's just a DNS swap in this case. And this is how blue green works. After you have explained what a blue green deployment is, the next part of this question was explain the CI CD flow. Right? So this is what you can explain. This is uh, the diagram from one of the videos in which a developer or multiple developers commit the code with the help of ID such as uh, VS code. And once the pull request is approved and merged, a, a build is triggered. That build will uh, do certain steps like uh, uh, download the source code, install binaries and dependencies, run NPM build, and then publish the artifacts. These artifacts will be published to the pipeline location and Azure CD pipeline then get the artifacts from the drop location or wherever the location we have specified and it will deploy to the stage. You can have additional quality gates before the deployment, such as if all the test cases passed, only then do the deployment or um, we can add manual approval as well. So if it is approved by one or more approvers, only then the deployment will be triggered and so on. There are different quality gates that we have discussed, right? So that deployment happened and then it should be deployed to stage. That stage in this case is the deployment slot when it comes to web app service. So we have deployed to that slot. And once uh, we have got the approval for deployment into production, then we deploy it to the production slot, right? And based on that, like if you are using blue green, then you can have only one stage over here or a step to swap between staging and production. If that is not the case, you can explain like either of these two scenarios. Either you have one stage and multiple slots, or you can have multiple stage and one slot, right? Either one is to two or two is to one. It depends on the use case. It depends how you are more comfortable explaining it, right? But I've explained blue green and the same strategy you can use over here. Right. Now, once you have explained that, there could be some additional questions now. Like, okay, now you have explained blue green deployment. What are some of the other deployment strategies? Then you can explain there are different other strategies such as recreate, canary, ring based, rolling update, AB deployment, feature flag and so on. So you can have a look, have a read on all these deployment strategies as well. If you want, I can create a separate dedicated video for discussing all the deployment strategies. So let me know if you want me to do that. Else just read about it. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Just like we have blue green or like these are other deployment strategies. Now the next question could be which build repository have you used with Azure DevOps? So let's say if you have a Docker based build, so you might have used Azure container registry. If it is uh, you know, a zip file, tar file, npm build, or uh, any other artifact, you can also use an inbuilt repository within Azure DevOps, which is called artifacts. Right? So you can explain this entire flow. Again, this was part of one of the video. 
and you can have a look and you can explain this entire flow instead of publishing the artifact to the pipeline itself the azure ci pipeline publish it to the artifact so by default it goes to the local feed and then you can promote between one feed to another and finally deploy it to the environment now the question could be there could be some follow up questions like what are feeds in artifact so you have explained feeds to us now what exactly are these feeds and what is the use case of it so you can explain like when a build is created it gets deployed to a local feed so these are nothing but the isolated container within a artifact repository and it is there to keep your build separate between environments like for example build just been created so it will go to the local feed and once you are ready to deploy it into the staging environment you promote it to the pre-release feed right and in a release pipeline there is a trigger which is watching this particular feed pre-release so whenever there is a package available in pre-release feed it will deploy that to the staging environment once it is deployed you can then promote the package from pre-release to release feed and there is another stage in the release pipeline which is watching the release feed and once the package is available in this release feed, then it will deploy it to the production environment. And you can explain the quality gates and all other approval steps as well. So this is about Azure DevOps artifacts and feeds. Now, next question is how would you use infrastructure as a code tool such as ARM template or Terraform to automate infrastructure provisioning? Right. This was part of video number eight, I believe, right? And it has all the steps. Again, uh, the CI will be triggered once the code is merged and inside the Git repository or the Azure repos repository, there will be Terraform configuration files. Or if we are using ARM template, then there'll be ARM template files. And based on that, your first stage will be to get the source, like to download the check out the Git repository. Then you run Terraform install because if you are using Microsoft hosted agent, the Terraform CLI might not be installed in that. So you will install Terraform and then you do Terraform initialization to initialize your backend and to initialize because backend will be residing in storage bucket. It is a remote backend and it will also download all the dependencies and binaries. Then you run TF validate or Terraform validate to make sure that your YAML is properly formatted. And then you format it. If there is no syntax error, then you run Terraform plan, which will show you or which will, you know, give you a dry run result of how many resources will be created, updated or deleted once you apply Terraform apply. Then you do Terraform archive, which will package all the files inside a directory, inside a zip directory, and then publish it to be consumed later by the release pipeline. Right. So we've done that. And then Azure CD pipeline or the release pipeline will be triggered. It will download the artifacts. It will extract the file and it will do the Terraform install again. Why again? Because this is a separate agent. The build agent was separate and it was part of the uh, Azure DevOps build pipeline. This is part of release pipeline. This is running a separate agent, a separate job. So that is why we have to install Terraform CLI again. Then it will run Terraform initialization again to download the dependencies and then it will do the Terraform apply. And then the resources will be provisioned for the staging environment the same way. And, and one more thing. So the resources will be provisioned in the Azure subscription with the help of service connection. Now you can have additional stage or you can have an additional step to destroy all the resources that were provisioned. So you can add a delay of let's say 30 days in between or 20 days depending on the time that you need for all your testing for all your verification and once that is done you can just add an approval step over here right and once it is approved your resources will be destroyed so this will make sure that once your testing is done once you've done all the validation and you have all the you know checklist items you can destroy the resources and you can save the cost and like you can follow all the best practices. Okay, so now uh, the next question could be what is the difference between Microsoft hosted agent and self hosted agent? So you can try by explaining the difference. Like let's say Microsoft hosted agents are part of the shared pool that's been shared among multiple users, among multiple organizations. 
and you know you request an agent whenever you trigger the pipeline and if you have specified to use microsoft hosted agent the request will be sent to the agent from the shared pool then after few seconds you have to wait for a few seconds sometime and then agent will be provisioned based on the availability and then it will execute your task and then it will be destroyed but if you are using self hosted agents it will be part of your own private pool that you have hosted right it will be available all the time you can install it as a part of virtual machine scale set and make it highly available highly scalable and fault tolerant so that it is available all the time now there could be a question like if microsoft has already provided you with the hosted agent why would you go on and set up your own self hosted agent right what would be the benefit or what would be the use case of it so few use cases that we have just discussed like you don't have to wait for the agent to become available from the resource pool right so it will be fast then you can install your custom software by default right because if you are using microsoft hosted agent you have to install let's say we were using terraform in the previous uh, question so you have to install terraform in each pipeline and every time pipeline is executed the terraform install command should be executed right but if you are using a self hosted agent you can have it pre packaged with all your custom softwares you can have it terraform cli azure cli anything that you want you can pre package that inside that so that is one of the important requirement and you you could have a high performance requirement for your build agent you could specify more cpu more memory more storage for a agent so that you are not restricted with the default options by microsoft you could have some specific network requirements like your build should not be traversed through the public internet which it does by the way in case of microsoft hosted agent if you are using self hosted agent it will be there within your azure subscription within your secure environment and you could have certain compliance and security requirements as well so self hosted agent is a good choice for production workload and it will give you more control over your agent and workload running on it the next question could be it is not specific to azure devops but i thought of adding it because we have covered docker kubernetes as well uh, in this series so it could be like i'm building a docker image and that is taking a long time and it is huge in size how can i reduce the image size and speed up the process the answer to that would be by using multi stage docker build right what it does is let's say we have two different stages one is the first line from node 18 alpine as installer the second stage is deployer what we'll do is we'll do everything on this base image like we, we took node 18 alpine image as the base image and it has an installer stage in that uh, we have a work directory and then we copied uh, package.json to the directory we run npm install we copied everything and then we run npm build now we only need build folder for the application to become available but over here we also have the node modules folder with all the binaries and libraries which we don't want and it will be huge in size it will just slow up the process so that is why we created one more stage which is taking nginx as the base image and from the installer stage copy from installer we are copying the build folder to this particular image so now we will only have the build folder as part of our docker image so this will reduce their image size drastically and it will significantly improve the performance of the build creation so multi stage build is one of the production best practices as well so make sure you understand this now explain some of the azure devops best practices in terms of security authentication authorization um, and you know performance reliability operational excellence and so on so for that there is an end to end dedicated video so check out this repo or day 15 video it will have all the details right we have covered it recently how can you ensure the security and privacy of secret used in your pipeline to prevent them from being exposed like you should never upload your secrets into pipeline doesn't matter if you are using a uh, 
it on production or uh, you know a personal project or if you are doing it for learning purpose you should never uh, upload it on the repository so what options do we have the first one is azure key vault so you create an azure key vault you know you grant your service principal access to that key vault to get the secrets uh, from with the help of pipeline and using a service connection you get the access to it right with the help of pipeline variable if you are accessing it from the pipeline the second option is to use a runtime variable we have also uh, used this one of the video demo right so have a look at that and runtime variable and then you tokenize your file and then you replace your token with the help of a step inside the pipeline and the third option is you can use a third party secret management service such as hashicorp vault so i am aware of these three there could be many more right but these three are the standard ones and out of these azure key vault is the most common and most secure when it comes to interacting with azure devops right then what is the most difficult issue you have ever faced while working with azure devops so if you have done the hands on while following this playlist or any playlist or anything you know if you have done the hands on you might have faced a lot of issues if you have not faced a lot of issues that means you have not done it enough you you have not done it deep enough so make sure you do that and if you have faced the issue so document it somewhere in your notepad in somewhere that is easy for you to remember or to revise later on and then when this question has been asked you can structure your answer in star format star format is you start with telling the situation okay um, i was learning or i was implementing something and uh, i was facing this issue then implement the task like what exactly were you doing then action like when you face the issue which all troubleshooting steps did you take right and list down all the steps and what happened eventually and what was the result like how did you resolve the issue you seek help you took the community support or you tried after a few days you enable debug logs you ssh into the server and you check the diagnostic logs you check from the kudu console if your files were deployed you check all the pipeline logs you deployed it manually and there could be many more steps that you would have taken so define all those steps and how it was resolved then how would you implement ci cd for a dockerized or microservice based application with multiple services so these were part of video number 10 in which we have dockerized an application and deployed it to azure container instances and video number 11 in which we deployed it to aks azure kubernetes service so you can have a look at that and you might already have done that then it's good so this is the repository that i wanted you to have a look along with me now that we have seen it i'll keep it updated i will whatever i remember or whatever issue i face or if you also face the issue please start a pull request and i will review it i will definitely add that uh, in the interview questions or any other folder if you have anything to add all right that's the end of this video and the series azure devops zero to hero so thank you so much for all your support all your love and it wouldn't have been possible without you so thank you for being there and i hope you have enjoyed it i hope you have learned a lot of new things with azure devops and i wish you all the best if you are preparing for interview or if you are uh, moving ahead in your career transition Feel free to reach out if you have any doubts, any questions, and I'll be there to answer your doubts and questions. We have a Discord community as well. You might have already be aware about it. And uh, yeah, that's it. And thank you so much. Uh, happy learning. And I will see you soon with the next video.